Hey everybody, Vestmore here, and today we're talking about Fire Emblem Three Houses. As I'm sure you're aware, I've been having an absolute blast playing the game, and honestly, there is just so much stuff I want to talk to you guys about. A ton of you seem to enjoy the video that we did on the best recruitable characters, so I figured today I'd bring you guys another video essentially detailing the best mastery skills you can get. If you find this video helpful, please be sure to leave a like and do let me know what you guys would like to see next. There's a ton of things to cover, like I said before, so let me know what you'd like to see first. Anyway, that's enough of that. Let's get to it. So, right off the bat, there are several places where you can get different abilities and skills in Fire Emblem Three Houses. As I'm sure you know by now, each character has their own personal skill that gives them a unique buff, but you can also get other skills and abilities from different places. Today we're going to be focusing on mastery skills, which are essentially abilities that you get for mastering a class. Now, you might be wondering, what exactly does mastering a class mean? Each class has its own XP bar that goes up each time you enter combat. Once a unit has maxed out their class's XP bar, they become a master, which can give them access to several things, including mastery abilities and even combat arts. Unlike class abilities that are lost once you switch from a class, these mastery abilities can be retained across classes. So it's a good idea to master classes that have good skills in them, before promoting to something different. One small important thing to note is that the combat arts that are unlocked this way are more often than not locked to the class, so it's definitely better to focus on the abilities rather than those. So in a nutshell, when leveling up your units, your strategy should also revolve around which classes have the abilities that you're going to need. As another quick note on the side though, you can actually use online adjutants in order to get skills. So it's a good idea to talk to the travellers that pop up around the monastery. From here, you can check out their different skills, and you can actually see which skills have a chance to be transferred, which is shown by the little arrow icon next to the abilities. They aren't guaranteed to teach your unit an ability, however, and since the game's just come out, I haven't really had the time to test how frequent this is, but it's definitely something worth keeping in mind. Anyway, with that all out of the way, let's actually get to the abilities. First up is Vantage. Now, this is a Fire Emblem staple. Vantage makes it so that when an enemy attacks you and you're under 50% health, you attack first. This is amazing on your powerhouse units because it can usually be the difference between life and death. And if your unit is pretty much capable of one-shotting any of the enemies on the map, you are pretty much invincible. It's important to note that your unit has to actually be able to attack back. So if one of your melee users is getting sniped, then you're out of luck. The skill pretty much works on everybody and is never really a bad option, so I'd recommend getting it on as many people as possible. As quick honourable mentions, the Defiant abilities that you can also get work pretty well with Vantage. They essentially allow you to boost things like Strength, Magic, Crit or under 25% health, so they can be used to turn your low health units into absolute murdering machines. Next up we have Wrath, and you get this by Mastering Warrior. If a foe initiates combat with you while your unit's HP is below 50, it grants plus 50 to crit. Now, this is insane, especially when used with Vantage. It essentially turns anyone, but especially crit heavy characters, into absolute powerhouses when they're attacked. And as I mentioned before, when paired with Vantage, your units pretty much become untouchable. Definitely pick this up if you can. Next up, we have Poison Strike. This comes from Dark Mage. If you initiate combat and you actually land a hit, the target you're attacking loses up to 20% of their maximum HP. Now, 20% is certainly nothing to shake a stick at. This is obviously best used against tank characters, as it can help soften them up. This, once again, is a good skill for everybody, but the main issue with this skill is how you acquire it. It requires Dark Mage, which to my knowledge requires an item that you can only get one of per playthrough. Meaning in order to get the skill on more than one of your units, you're going to have to probably use online adjutants. Moving on from there, we also have Life Taker, which is a Dark Bishop skill. The unit will recover HP equal to 50% of the damage dealt after defeating a foe. This is quite useful on characters that can nuke enemies down. However, it does have some issues. 
First off is that it heals you. Now that might seem a bit weird because obviously heals are good, but remember that Vantage only works under 50% HP. So assuming you're building around that, this skill could mess you up. And of course the second thing is much like Poison Strike, this comes from having a Dark Seal, meaning that you can only get one per playthrough. Next up on the list is Quick Repost. You get this by mastering the War Master. If a foe initiates combat with you while your unit's HP is over 50%, you get to make a guaranteed follow-up attack. Now one thing to note here is that it says follow-up attack, not counter-attack. A follow-up attack is essentially the double attack that you get when your speed is high enough compared to an opponent's. It doesn't, say, allow melee users to attack ranged users at any range. Like a certain someone I'm sure you guys are familiar with. But because of this, it's pretty good on tanky, slower characters that might not necessarily have much speed, as it allows them to counter-attack twice when they're healthy. Next up are the blow abilities. Now these are essentially the same thing, but for different stats, so I figured I'd group them together. You have Fiendish Blow, which you get from Mage, which allows you to essentially add 6 to your magic if you initiate combat. You then have Death Blow, which is the strength version, and that comes from Brigand. Next up is Darting Blow, which is from Pegasus Knight, and that increases your attack speed. Now, one cool thing to note about this is this increases your attack speed and not your speed stat, meaning it won't give you any bonuses to your avoidance or anything like that. You then have Warding Blow, which increases your resistance by 6. And finally, you have Armored Blow, which increases your defense by 6. Now these are just really nice general buffs to have. They can be the difference between killing an enemy in one hit, doubling an enemy, and even surviving their counterattack. I'd put more value on the offensive versions of the ability, as your main objective should be to remove opponents as quickly as possible. Next up, we have Lethality. Now, this is gotten from the Assassin class, and it gives you a chance to instantly kill a foe when dealing damage to them. Now, this is essentially like a secondary critical hit modifier, but of course, it's much, much lower, with the proc percentage being 25% of your dexterity stat. This is definitely a more niche ability, and certainly it isn't reliable, but on higher dex characters like Petra, this can be pretty potent. And then finally, we have the two premier tanking abilities, Pavis and Aegis. Pavis you get from being a Fortress Knight, and this essentially has a chance to reduce Lance, Sword, Axe, and Brawling damage by half, and this triggers off of your Dexterity stat. This can turn already tough to kill tanks into absolute walls that are almost impossible to get through, which can be really good for stopping dangerous enemies from getting to your squishy backline. And then, of course, you have Aegis, which is essentially the same thing, but it reduces bow and magic damage instead, and also triggers off of dexterity. Those are pretty much the standout mastery abilities that I've found. There's certainly a lot of other good ones, but I would argue that these are the ones worth going for. Considering you have a limited amount of time to level up your units throughout the story, you definitely have to be picky with which ones you want to use. Before we wrap up just yet though, I am going to quickly give you guys some tips to mastering your classes, because honestly, it's a pretty tedious process. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you get XP points towards your class just by entering into combat. This includes not only attacking, but being attacked by opponents and even healing. The main thing to keep in mind is your attack doesn't even need to hit. Just as long as you're entering combat, you'll be earning XP. The base earn rate of class XP per combat is 1. So it's pretty slow. However, you can speed this up slightly. As you progress through the story, you will end up unlocking a feature within the monastery that allows you to interact with the saint statues. This allows you to spend your renown, which you get by completing auxiliary battles. There are four statues to spend your renown on and each confers interesting bonuses that can help you out throughout your gameplay. However, the main one we want is the Saint Seth Leon statue. You can spend 3,700 Renown to get the class EXP plus one bonus. This will increase your base class XP gain from one per combat to two per combat, essentially halving the amount of time you need to actually master a class. I strongly suggest that you get this bonus as soon as possible because it means you can start mastering your classes faster and in turn promote out of them as quickly as possible. But that is pretty much all you need to know about mastery skills and how to get them. If you found this video helpful, please do leave a like and let me know in the comments down below if there's any skills that you found a good use for. Anyway, that's enough from me. This is Vest, signing off.
Miss Bridget Pride. I really hope you guys enjoyed that video. Remember to hit that subscribe button and also click on the little bell icon to turn on notifications so you don't miss my next upload. Also don't forget, you can check out 269 and Paradise Central streaming over on Twitch six days a week. You can find a link to the multi-stream in the description box down below. Be sure to drop by and get involved. Thanks again for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.